Hello, this is Robert University with a, another tutorial, uh, Adobe Illustrator Tutorial 4, at which point we're going to move on from uh, the last episode. And, and to tell you the truth, I've um, taken some time and, and advanced uh, our last uh, bit of design work so that, well, I, I don't want to bore you with just messing around with things. What we've got now is this graphic that I've introduced, graphic design, how to be a better designer and learn Adobe Illustrator at the same time. So I'm starting with this graphic, but if I zoom out and get back to my fit on screen page, you'll see that uh, this Robert University logo has been developing. <clears throat> Excuse me. We left it here last time with this kind of presumptuous, let's just say, are you um, university um, graduation mortarboard hat graphic with the rosette or the um, uh, uh, um, if you're not familiar with the term rosette, this kind of um, badge, etc. Um, to tell you the truth, uh, I think that it's too literal and 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 Really, uh, I'm not quite happy with it. What I'd like to do is really reduce these ideas to their lowest common denominator. And you can see that in this graphic, while you're gone, I uh, kind of played with this and um, tried to get that graphic to possibly work in the gap between Robert and University and to make this rosette or this uh, ribbon kind of work with the eye of university. OK, that's fine, but still quite presumptuous and kind of clunky, really, and literal. I think we need to move beyond that. So what I've done in the meantime, since the last video, is that I, I, I've kind of thought about the whole process and tried to came to the realization, really, that Robert University, uh, as a brand for these videos is is OK, but what we're really talking about is our subject matter, and that's graphic design. So now I'm going to zoom right in here. OK, I think that mortar board and everything is fine. Yeah, but I, I don't think we need all that. So what I've done is I've changed Robert University to the point of this project, which is all about learning about graphic design. And I think I can kind of lose the reference to Adobe Illustrator and that sort of rounded corner box that they use for the corporate identity. I'm not really happy with referencing uh, a brand that they've taken so many years to uh, establish and probably fiercely protect. What I'm really trying to get across in this logo is that graphic design is something that's well worth learning and to make uh, to have a high quality of graphic design is really quite important. So I'm thinking maybe I don't need that mortar board, that hat. Yes, and uh, maybe maybe all we really need is kind of this badge that signifies quality, this rosette that implies that graphic design, these videos that I'm producing um, are of a high quality and that they it, once you've listened to them, you could perform graphic design at a much higher level. So maybe all I really need is that rosette, that that the, the idea that it dangled from a university mortar board or hat that you got upon graduation. Well, that was a fine place to start. But maybe all I really need is to substitute that um, rosette for perhaps something within the text of graphic design itself. Now, I've typed in graphic design, I've changed the spacing as we've gone through uh, a couple of times before. I'm, I'll spare you all that. What I'm thinking is that the way these words actually work together, graphic design, how to be a better graphic designer and learn Adobe Illustrator at the same time. Maybe I could just simplify the whole thing and I've got um, this correlation between this rosette, yes, which I'm going to um, bring over here so you can see it. 
and I've seen this relationship between this rosette and the lowercase i's that appear in both graphic and design. And I'm thinking, wow, why don't I nestle that rosette right here within uh, within the word design between the S and the G, and maybe I can pick up all of that, all of the inferred sort of quality by just using a, a rosette and, and focusing on the subject of these tutorials, graphic design, because you remember, who knows where my YouTube site might lead. I, I might go into other Adobe uh, 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 programs. I might go beyond that and go into other programs. I, 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 I think if I'm establishing in a, a brand for my um, YouTube channel, that possibly I should maybe leave things open for developments in the future and just basically concentrate on the primary function of the, these tutorials in that uh, by watching them, you can become a, a better graphic designer while learning Adobe Illustrator. So for the reasons of one, not infringing on the Adobe Illustrator um, trademarks, yes, okay, that's usually not a good idea, but I don't really even need to infringe upon their their trademarks. All I really need to do is infer that if you watch these videos, um, they will make you a better graphic designer. And that is exemplified by this rosette or badge. And it looks remarkably like a lowercase i. So let's just try that as, a, a, as an identity for these uh, videos. Now, here we go, we got a uh, lowercase i, and you can see that the, um, uh, because the, this is technically a compound path, although they don't overlap, the first thing I need to do is to go to object, yes, and compound path and release, yes. That means I can separate the dot of the i with the lowercase bit of the i. Now, I've got this rosette which I created, okay. First thing we're going to do is we're going to take this dotted i and we're going to delete it and I'm going to take this rosette ungroup it you can always the best way to ungroup is by right clicking and hitting ungroup yes and now I can have this rosette which we made earlier I'm just going to put it right over here now you can see that my um, smart guides are are making it so that this rosette immediately is centered upon my lower um, this kind of column this rectangle that forms the lower part of the lowercase i okay it seems to be a good size i might want to make it larger let's try hitting shift that makes it proportional yes and uh, if i pick it up you'll see that smart guides works again and okay all right not so great really because i lose some of that um, some of those uh, bits of the badges so i'm going to hit Control z and Control z and go back to the smaller size now what about this i okay I'd like to replace it with this kind of ribbon part of the badge. So um, let's just say so I can see it better. I might want to go up to window and uh, <clears throat> excuse me and uh, swatches and just ch change it into a different color. Let's just pick uh, red. OK, I'm going to bring it over and I'm going to kind of line it up with the lowercase i and I'm going to zoom in so I can do this in a better way and let's just make it line up with the lowercase i and if i hit uh without hitting shift this time if i uh just grab the lower left hand corner and kind of make it occupy the same exact space that lowercase i did i can click on the original lowercase i delete it change this to black okay let's have a look at it let's zoom out oh we don't want that. <clears throat> Wrong. OK. Get rid of swatches. Let's zoom out by hitting our lower left hand corner and let's just say 25%. OK, and then zoom in. All right, so graphic design with a uh, a badge instead of a lowercase i. Well, 
I don't think that's working so well, do you? So let's say control Z and control Z. And let's just use the original form of the uh, lowercase i. That's the bottom of our badge. Let's just have this rosette. Let's be subtle. Let's uh, imply that 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 badge, that seal, that thing that appears on a university um, um, diploma, a gold seal at the bottom right hand corner embossed perhaps with the university's name. Maybe that's just enough right there. OK, so an exercise in subtlety. Let's zoom in. All right. I'm not impairing the readability of my logo. I uh, all I've done really is substitute I for the very top of a rosette or the seal. All these ideas that have distilled down to this very basic thing. Now, if I want to create something very clean as um, <clears throat> vector art, I might want to do this as well. Let's go up to window, our view and outline. You can see that right now what I've got are these pure vector outlines, yes? And if I hit this um, uh, button or this one, yes, you can see that you can mess around with the paths themselves, etc. If you want to manipulate paths themselves, you can always do this, yes? If you click on this, uh, this second select tool, you can marquee around an individual uh, node and uh, grab it and yank it. Yes, you can you can create different shapes from vector paths by doing that. I, I don't really want to. What I really want to do is this. I want to use my select tool and I want to click on this path, my rosette, and I want to click on this P by hitting shift so that they're both connected. And what I want to do is come up to window. Yes, and um, come down to Pathfinder, and I've shown you this before, but and we'll talk more about this uh, in the next videos. What I want to do is click on this button, Unite. Now check out what happens with my rosette and my lowercase p selected if I hit Unite. All of a sudden, it becomes a single vector path. So what I want to do now is that's quite cool. I'm going to group everything together. I'm going to hit Control G. I'm going to come up here to view um, and preview, and I've got a single, very clean vector graphic logo for my uh, YouTube tutorials. How to be a better graphic designer and learn Adobe Illustrator at the same time. All right, I've used just my rosette. Okay, it's uh, it's all right. It could be maybe refined more, but. Uh, if I zoom out, I'm quite happy with that logo. If I zoom out, I can hit the um, magnifying tool. I can hit the keyboard command Alt and change that to a minus. And that means if I click, I can zoom out. OK, let's use this logo for now. It's not perfect, but it's getting there. OK, great. What I've done is I've converted my name into the subject of um, or the purpose of this work I've, I've stepped back i've thought what does robert university or ru have to do with anything not really what i'm trying to promote is the idea that graphic design is something quite special and that you should aspire to be really good at it by having this badge this emblem etc and also saying in my ta tagline what the purpose of this whole thing is okay Let's move on, all right? Because the purpose of this video is really all about color. And hopefully we'll get to composition or that might get moved to the next video, depending on how long this goes on. Let's talk about color. All right, color theory. You've all seen the color wheel, yes? Um, <clears throat> uh, red, yellow, and blue, primary colors, green, purple, and orange, secondary colors mix them together. Opposite things on the color wheel are um, uh, uh, complementary colors, which should be used for certain reasons. Yes, the combination of orange and purple, for instance, or a green and red can be quite jarring, but quite useful at times. There's plenty of things out there, plenty of color wheels for you to study. OK, that's very, very basic th uh, stuff. What we want to investigate today is about how to use color within Adobe Illustrator. 
Now, you might remember that when we set up our original A4 template here, by default, Adobe gave us the CMYK color model. Now, that stands for cyan, magenta, yellow, and in printer terminology, K means black. That's to avoid confusion with the word blue. So CMYK is cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. And where this comes from is from the printing industry, the full color or four color printing industry. Now, it's probably, you, you've probably never really experienced what a major printing factory actually looks like where your newspapers come from or printed brochures or um, <clears throat> magazines that kind of thing well i've spent a lot of time in those places and where cmyk comes from is from um, the way in which a, a huge four color printing press is actually physically constructed a printing press basically is a long machine where paper is fed in one end and then printed in different printing stations throughout the length of the machine and the final printed piece is kicked out at the very end. Okay, in full color or four color printing, a combination of cyan, magenta, yellow and black uh, uh, in various dot patterns at various amounts can reconstruct any color photograph that is fed into this machine, okay? So, um, in the printing industry, all you have to remember is that four color photographs or full color photographs are produced by different combinations of tiny little dots of the four colors, cyan, magenta, yellow and black and you've been seeing this all your life now let me just ask you if you've ever noticed when you were reading a newspaper or looking at a magazine or maybe even the milk container that you were pouring your uh, uh, milk onto your breakfast cereal sometimes at the very edge of the printing area you might have noticed a set of little boxes in these colors cyan which is a, a light blue magenta which is kind of a um a, a bright pink yes um yellow uh which is the color of, of not an orange yellow but a very greenish yellow yeah very pure yellow and black i just want to, you to think back in your memory have i ever seen those those boxes those little squares at the bottom of a newspaper where perhaps it was trimmed improperly or maybe you were ripping open some package and you saw hidden in the folds of a milk carton a series of little boxes these are uh, printers um, um, things that printers use to make sure that their um, color intensity etc is not uh, uh, wrong they they make sure they look at these little boxes and and they notice whether or not they've got too much uh, they're using too much magenta or whatever Think about it. Have you ever seen those little stripes of yellow, magenta, cyan, and black at the very bottom of something printed? Okay, so CMY printing, uh, CMYK printing is rooted in the printing industry. And, 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 and those of you that are interested in preparing artwork for printing, for proper printing, whenever you open a... Um, a new Adobe uh, Illustrator uh, file. Let's just do it. You see down here, you have this color mode, CMYK. Okay, so if you're preparing something to be printed, this is definitely the uh, color mode that you want. But you also have this option, RGB. Now, RGB is a bit of a mystery. That's uh, all about red, green, and blue. Yes, combination of red, green, and blue. Now, I don't know whether any of you have ever been in a bar or a, a club or whatever that still had a projection television system. Maybe some of you can remember that, where 
actual beams of light are being projected onto a screen. And if you look up at that projector, you see one, um, one beam is yellow, one is red, and one is blue. This is another way to produce what's known as additive color, or color that's a combination of red, green, and blue. Now, some would say that if you're preparing artwork for an inkjet printer or a laser jet printer, that maybe RGB is the way to go. The thing is, there's such a fine difference between the two systems now that as a general rule, if you're preparing things to be printed officially, use CMYK. If you're preparing materials for the web or other electronic devices or inkjet printers or laser printers, perhaps you might want to consider using RGB. CMYK as opposed to RGB, RGB is an additive printing, is an additive color process where beams of yellow, red, are all added together to produce color, whereas CMYK is a reflective process. Think of it as in terms of um, uh, almost as if you went up down to the local hardware store and were ordering paint for your dining room or for your kitchen, yes? And we're mixing those colors up and the light was reflecting off of those colors and you could see what color it was in normal light. That's the difference between the CMYK process and the RGB process. So let's just get rid of this. OK, so um, when using color in Adobe Illustrator. Usually if you click on something and, and uh, uh, you'd like a color to come up, you, you'll get a couple of options. OK, for instance, if I click on graphic design, OK, and I come up here to window. And um, uh, uh, I want to somehow create a color, yes? What I really want to do is click on swatches, all right? Now, swatches are really the purest form of color that you can use within Adobe Illustrator, and I highly recommend them. Swatches are not combinations of dots in CMYK, all right? It's not cyan, magenta, yellow, and, and black, all sort of mixed together in a, a combination of different gradients, okay? Uh, what swatches are, are pure color. And because we're working in CMYK um, in a format in Adobe Illustrator, what our um, software will do is it will automatically transform these swatches into different combinations of cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. But for the designer, it's much easier and, and uh, more satisfying to use different swatches as they appear. Now the swatches palette gives you a very basic selection of swatches and, and it's not very useful, yes? But if you come up here to view, yes, or window, and you go to swatch libraries, okay? And you come up here to color books, and you come down here to the Pantone color system, you can see you get all these different combinations. Now, Pantone is a global color mixing system that was originally designed years ago so that if you specified a certain color here in Great Britain, for instance, and your your book was being printed in Japan, they would have the exact amounts of, um, of, of, of the exact formula to produce the color that you specified. A universal color mixing format, just like you were down at the local hardware store and saying, I want this kind of yellow right here on this swatch uh, to paint my bedroom with, okay? Now, you see all these different variations. What we really want to deal with, if you're looking for a universal first go-to color system, what you want to do is come down here to Pantone Solid Coated and click on that. And look, you get this little, this little box. It's just a hint of what lies within this box. If I grab the lower left-hand corner and expand, you can see that you've got 
literally hundreds of colors. OK. Now, what does Pantone solid coated color actually mean? OK, well, first of all, Pantone is the name of the company that established all these standards years ago. OK, solid means that these colors are as if they were mixed in cans of paint like you were at the hardware store. They're not combinations of of cyan, magenta, yellow and black. But you can see that there's variations between each color, different amounts of white and black, et cetera, and all are are um, uh, portrayed from a wide variety, from a, a light variation of the particular color to a very dark variation. OK, but what does coated mean? Why coated? All right, I'll tell you where that comes from. Um, in printing, there are different kinds of paper that color uh, that ink is printed on. Coated means that this is how the Pantone color system, these colors that they've established and created these formulas for mixing, yes? When you choose the coated palette, that means these colors are represented how they would be, uh, how they would appear when they're printed on slick, glossy, very bright white paper. Felt this. You've all felt a magazine that has very slick and glossy paper. You've all held a, a brochure that sort of has perceived quality through through paper that's thick and very glossy and very white. Yeah, that's actually comes from a coating of calcium carbonate that's actually mixed and spread over the the uh, fibrous bits of the paper underneath. OK, what Pantone solid uncoated colors are are these very same sets of colors, but as they appear on paper that's not coated paper that we know is perhaps toothy if we um, rub it, it's uncoated, it absorbs ink. So these same colors, if you choose the uncoated Pantone solid pattern, uh, palette, will all be darker because of the absorption of the colors into fibrous paper, and that's a difference. But for us, if we're using a CMYK, Adobe Illustrator um, template or format, <clears throat> and we're using Pantone solid color um, um, swatches, well, that means that we create things in a way that, that look quite vibrant to us, and then Adobe converts them into various combinations of CMYK if we need to print that. And the same with RGB, yes? But just for the sake of a designer's sanity, this kind of color palette, this solid coated color palette is really the one to, to use. So for instance, if I wanted to change the colors on my graphic design logo, I could select the whole thing, I've grouped it all together. And I could come over here and I could click on this blue. Yes, okay, and there we go, blue. But what I want you to note is that that blue that I clicked on appears down here in the lower left-hand corner for my fill color. And it also appears up here in my swatch palette. So anything I click on in the um, Pantone solid coated um, file here will then be added to my swatches palette. And this is how you establish a, um, a, um, a, a color system within your graphic. Now let's just say that I want this, this rosette to stand out. So I'm going to ungroup by right clicking. Yeah. Right click, ungroup. And what do you say I just, uh, now you see what I've done. I've joined my rosette with the P. Now, if I'm trying to make it gold, look at this. I get the P and the rosette. So maybe that wasn't such a great idea to connect the P and the rosette. Okay, we're learning. All right, and this, this is the world of software and graphic design. Okay, so uh, I'll go back and change that for the next episode. Okay, so that's that's the deal with color. What you want to do is um, uh, really refer to a much expanded 
color palette rather than what the swatches um, panel gives you. Yes. And you want to uh, use those colors uh, uh, no matter what format your your illustrator document is in. If it's in a default CMYK format, that's fine. If it's RGB, that's OK. These are all fine points. Usually it makes absolutely no difference at all which color system that you use. Um, but if I click on this button right here, yes, you can see that uh, my yellow is now added to my swatches as well. So that's the most very basic way of converting your artwork into really vibrant colors. If you notice within the Pantone palette, you can see that each color is, in, is actually kind of a set of colors, a set of seven colors, yes? A very light variation of the color, Pantone 148, yes, up to Pantone 154C, that means coated. That's more black, yes? So less black and more black. Now, if you want colors to go together, you might want to select colors that are all in the same, that all occupy the same um, position in the scale of seven colors. For instance, if I wanted to make uh, my A this very um, dark purple, yes, or a very light purple, let's just say, and I wanted to make it with a very light blue i choose maybe that first color in the light blue scale as well now those colors are basically going to go together because of their value or lack of intensity etc so that, that's kind of a heads up on how to make colors go together all right let's say that i wanted to import a palette of uh, colors from a photograph that i've seen for instance, on the web. So let's go like to the web. OK, let's go to uh, Google. And let's type in um, forest. And let's click on images. OK, here's a forest image. Great. I'm going to right click on that and say save image as. And I'm going to put that down in my someplace where I can find it. In my uh, Adobe videos file. I'm going to title it forest. Okay, and save it. Now back to my palette. I'm going to say file place. And I'm going to place my forest photo and here it is. Now you can see it's a very low resolution and um, let's get rid of our um, palette for now, yeah. Okay, so the forest, let's say I'm really into these earth tone colors and I want to establish, I want to make my graphic design logo in colors from the forest. <clears throat> so what I want to do is this, okay. I want to come over here and I want to pick up my eyedropper tool, click, and this is something that Illustrator never used to do, and they finally made this work, which is quite wonderful. If I click anywhere on this forest picture, you can see that the color appears down here. My fill color box in the lower left. Yes. So. If I then move that and make my G. Uh, um, <laughs> OK, if I. Come over here and I click my fill of color. Yes. As green. Yeah. You can see that when I turn when, when I click on my letter G, it reverts to the color that um, uh, was originally had. If I bring this over and drop it into my palette, did you see how I did that? I grabbed it from my uh, uh, fill color bit and I put it right in my swatch. Now I can click on my G and click on this swatch. I can make it green. So. What I can do is I can go around and using the eyedropper tool, I can select a range of colors that all work together in this photograph and use those for my artwork. And, and that's uh, if you have trouble with colors and you don't want to use the Pantone solid coated palette, you might want to select a photograph somewhere that uh, 
illustrates the range of colors you'd like to use and go ahead and go sample those colors pixel by pixel yes move them over to your swatch palette yeah and use them in your design do you see isn't that cool all right that's where we're going to end this video and uh, we're going to get into composition uh, in the next video okay so that's just a bit about color and how to use color within adobe illustrator there's more to say obviously but that will give you a really good start and um uh, look forward to the next video where we're going to actually use um uh, illustrator to create sophisticated compositional elements okay and uh, i look forward to that